This is Cole Bartow, and we are just about ready to start our new year, new big six. Let's chat. Um, we're joined by John Marino, one of the new big six team. Um, then I'm Cole Bartow, and we're looking forward to just chatting with you for a little bit this afternoon. We welcome you to put your comments and questions in the chat as we go along, or give us a thumbs up. Just let us know what you think as we move through our um, agenda today. We want to talk a little bit about inquiry in a way that happens every day and in every subject area. We call it the big six, and we want to show you how the big six can help. Um, we're going to show a little bit about who we are, um, some resources that we have to share. And at the very beginning, we want to say that you know we're a community and a team of educators. Um, we are passionate about the big six. And for me, um, and I'll let John kind of speak to this here in a moment as well, my um, relationship with the big six started when I was in library school. Um, and as I was learning about the big six and then putting it into practice in my years as a school librarian um, in the high school, it really was the thing that made sense to me and helped bring together all kinds of projects and kind of the enthusiasm that, that kids had around learning in a variety of areas. So the big six has been part of my professional life forever. Um, hi, Kim. W welcome. Thanks for joining us. Um, John, do you want to say a little bit about um, where you entered into the big six world as well? Yes, thanks, Cole. Um, hi, everybody. I'm John Marino, and uh, I had used the Big Six for years as a school librarian. Um, and, you know, over the course of my experience with the Big Six, I've come to think of it as an information problem solving process. And now I see it everywhere. Um, so at one time when, um, you know, the research process or an inquiry process was always something you had to think really hard about and had to really um, try hard to remember the different stages. And then when you had to put it into instruction and teach students about it, it just got, it got to be very confusing. So we usually reserve it for that big research project. Um, and as time has gone on, and I start to think about how it really does happen for me every day, all day, and in every area, um, it became a lot easier to think about. And so um, now that uh, I am working for the University of North Texas, I like to talk about the big six as an information problem solving process um, in uh, my courses uh, for, for those um, usually classroom teachers looking to get certified as school librarians. Um, so, Cole, do you have anything to add? Well, yeah, I, I think, um, you know, so we're kind of introducing ourselves as a, a new team, um, some new faces with the Big Six. We are joined online um, by one of the co-creators of the Big Six process, Mike Eisenberg, who's going to be chiming in through the comments and, and the chat. Um, we hope that you'll do the same and, and show us some thumbs up and, and that sort of thing as we talk through a few things. But um, we just want to kind of touch base and let you know that we're here as support and, um, and have a lot to share. And we'd like to learn from you as well as we kind of move forward with the new face of the Big Six um, from 2019 forward. So it looks like Mike is on board and watching. We're joined by another friend, Sean Fullerton, from the greater Seattle area. Uh, and definitely um, you know, say hi and, and use that chat to be able to interact with, with all of us. We're also joined by another friend, Christy Mockstutz, who has um, kind of joined our, our team here with the Big Six, and she and some of her students from the University of Montana and um, University of Montana Western are um, part of our experience this afternoon as well. So that's a little bit about who we are and why we're here. Um, and John, did you want to go ahead and talk a little bit about what is the Big Six and the Super Three? What is this process and um, how do we learn more? Okay. Um, well, in schools, we hear a lot about inquiry, and uh, it's, it's all over the, American, the AASL American Association of School Librarian new standards, um, but we see them in content area standards um, and in a variety of different places. Uh, however, um, what does that mean? Um, because for many people, inquiry means 
research skills. Inquiry means information literacy. Um, uh, and it can mean, it, it can actually mean a number of these things depending on how it's applied. So that's why we like to think of it as an information problem solving process. Yes, it is inquiry. Yes, it is a research process. Um, but it's also a process that we can apply just to solve everyday questions. Um, and as well as sort of tackle the big projects. So um, we're here to talk about the big six. There are a number of processes out there. Many of you are familiar with those. Um, but we have found that the big six is not only um, the most accurate description of what happens when we're solving problems where we need information, um, but it's also really pretty intuitive and easy to remember. So therefore, it's easy to teach. And it's easy to think about as we're going through the processes. So, and John, too, I think, I think it's also from the student perspective, it's something that they really identify with and remember. I'll never forget the time. And of course, you know, I'm a teacher librarian in my background and, and, and that. But when my own children who had um, a school librarian in their elementary school years came home and were singing the Super 3 song, and we began, that began to be part of the vocabulary. And still now with one in college and one finishing up high school, it's still part of how they approach, whether it's an assignment or a, a paper, you know, I hear those words, I hear whether it's plan, do, review, the super three, or I hear the more developed stages of the big six. It's once you get started with it as a, a young student, it doesn't leave you. It's, it's a process and a way of talking about information problem solving that really sticks. Yeah, and in the information world, we like to call that metacognitive thinking, right? Mm -hmm. Thinking about the way you think. And if you start, if you, you start to recognize those stages of, of, you know, the information problem solving process, and you recognize what stage you're in, and then you can recognize what stage you might be having trouble with. And that, as we work with students and being able to do that and think in, those, in that way, or even colleagues, um, we're able to kind of take that next level, think about where we are. Uh, we're much more effective at troubleshooting problem areas when we run into challenges or roadblocks. So that's, you know, that's, that's what we're going for, um, you know, in this effort is to start to get to that metacognitive thinking. Um, so what is the big six? Uh, what is the process? Um, there are six stages and they, um, it's, it's, well, let me tell you about the six stages and then we can talk about how we apply it. So in the first, good. yeah, in the first stage, we're um, identifying the situation or the problem. Okay. It may be, I want to go see a movie and I don't know wh where it's playing or when. Okay. We need to identify the problem. Then we look at, you know, what are the available sources uh, and which of those sources might be the most appropriate um, to, you know, to, to access in order to, to solve this issue or answer this question or solve the problem. Um, and then we move on to location access. Well, how do we actually access that information? Okay, where will I find, um, you know, show times and theaters? Uh, and then we actually engage with that information. We're reading, we're writing, perhaps um, taking notes. And then we're synthesizing the information from multiple sources, right? We get a whole bunch of different um, you know, information maybe from more than one source for more complex problems. And then um, we're presenting that information either to an audience or we're just making a decision. And then we evaluate, you know, how, how we did, right? How did that turn out? You know, did, did the, the steps that I took, places that I went for information, the way that I put the information together, how did it go? Was it su successful and can I do a better job next time? Okay, this, a lot of that we actually do without really thinking. So that's why we like to say that it's nonlinear. We don't always, we, we, we sometimes get dropped into different stages of the process. Like for example, I just me might need to know the definition uh, of a word. I'll do a quick look up on my phone uh, on, on a definition. And that's just a locating information stage. Okay, so, um, you know, what we find is that it doesn't have to necessarily start with task definition at stage one and end up with evaluation at the end. Um, but when we recognize where we were, where we are along the process, I think that it's much easier to um, not only teach uh, the, the process, but also recognize what it is we need to get through the rough spots. 
Yeah, it's that recognition of where we are, that maybe where we hit those those points where we need to think a little bit harder or do something a little bit different in order to get through to solving our problem or or making that decision. And I like that distinction. It's not just about academic work. It's that process that we all go through to to make those decisions and to to find out the things and share the things that that we know about the world. So um, I think it's it's just a powerful way um, once we kind of turn it inside out and and do have that metacognitive understanding of where we are in that problem solving process. So I, I, like again, you know, it's been part of my professional life for more than twenty five years, and and it still is something that I come back to time and time again to help me make decisions or to solve problems that I have in my life. And when we're um, working with younger students, um, you know, we found a way to kind of make it more accessible. So we call that the Mm -hmm. super three. And the super three is a process of planning, doing, and reviewing. And even the youngest students kind of understand the stages of, you know, the information problem solving process. Right. So whenever we have a question or a project, we have to plan, OK, what it is, what it, what do we need to do in order to be successful? And then we actually go through those steps, those processes, the do stage, and then we review. Well, how did we do? How did that work out? Is there another place we could have gone to get that information? Um, so um, we found that the big six and super three work with learners of all ages. Um, it's even been applied uh, to trainings and corporations and other organizations. So um, we're very excited about, uh, you know, about finding the different ways to, uh, you know, see the big six in action. Um, But I just wanted to point out um, how we look at it now in terms of using uh, the big six every day and every way. So unless Cola, you had something to add, I can talk more about that. No, I think that's great. And uh, I know that you just recently, you and Mike co-authored an article that was in, it was a knowledge quest yep. that kind of touches on, on this idea. So if you want to read more, um, and we can put a link in our uh, comments and chat afterward, but it's a great way to kind of refresh um, some of the things that, that John is going to talk about here. So when we talk about um, the big six every day, we're talking about, you know, as we've mentioned so far, how it shows up, uh, you know, in situations we encounter all the time, whether it's just like finding information to answer a question or if it's for a particular task in school um, or an assignment uh, or the big project. And of course, in schools, the big project tends to be the research project. Um, But, you know, if we look at what's happening at home, um, you know, it could be buying a car or finding a solution to like, you know, plumbing problems. Um, so we look at how it manifests every, you know, every day, uh, all throughout the day. Um, it happens not just at school, um, also at home. Um, it happens in public libraries, um, in other informal places where we learn. So it also happens when we look at, when we focus on schools, it also happens um, a little differently in the different content areas. So for example, you know, the big six is happening in math. It's happening in English language arts classes and the sciences, as well as uh, history and the social studies classes where we usually see those big research projects. So what does that mean? Um, When we're looking at what it looks like in math, okay, for example, students need to recognize the different types of problems that they're encountering, right? So um, for example, uh, you know, as, teachers, we recognize the different types of uh, addition. And so is it, you know, um, you know, you know, what type of an addition problem is this? And that will dictate then what the next step is. What's the solution strategy I'm going to apply if I know what the type of problem it is. All right. And then what do I information do I need to know in order to solve that problem and to reread uh, the problem and to get the information I need to solve it. However, Mm -hmm. if we're looking at a problem in English language arts, say, for example, a writing assignment, you need to know, well, what is the purpose of this writing assignment? Is it a persuasive essay or is it just an expository paper? Um, And once you recognize the type of problem it is, you're going to be able to then proceed through the process of completing the assignment, 
successfully. Um, let's look at um, uh, also, oh yeah, I wanted to mention that um, each content area will also dictate the type of information sources we're looking for, which databases are most appropriate for looking for information um, or what other sources of information we're gonna need. It also dictates the type of presentations that we ask students to make. Okay, so um, uh, here's one example is, let's just say uh, in a performing arts class where they wanna um, stage a production of Hamlet, all right? So the entire process of how is it that we're going to present Hamlet in a way that's gonna be accessible to our audience of our you know, student peers, for example. Um, and then that'll dictate you know, the process that's taken throughout. Um, and of course, the final product is a stage performance. Right? It's not the research paper or it's not the, um, you know, the, the code that, you know, in, in, say, a computational thinking act exercise or so on. So, uh, you know, that's just another example of how the big six will look different in different contexts. However, the process will look the same. It's just that each stage in the process, you want to um, just recognize those differences. Um, yeah, John, and what I'd <laughs> add to that, too, is that, you know, in a standards based in the standards based world that we live in, when we look at mathematics, that your first example, um, and in particular, you know, if we're talking about common core state standards and mathematics there are these practice standards. And as we look at the practice standards, there's a, a, a really incredible parallel in the doing of math that you see in the doing of information problem solving. Um, and one of the other areas that, that I'm really excited to um, be digging more into is social studies. So we have the C3 framework, which is kind of the national social studies framework. And there's such an emphasis on the use of primary sources. And there's such an emphasis on information problem solving to make good decisions or to be able to discern good information from inaccurate information. So what I really am excited about too is that we're kind of moving, um, we're using our kind of our background and our, our training with our basis in school library work. But what we're seeing is this recognition of the need to teach students to be thinkers to be thinkers and doers around the problems that they have to solve. So whether you're a, you know, a, an elementary teacher and you're teaching all of these content areas, I think one of the things that brings it all together is this process, this information problem solving process that can be applied in any situation and across all content areas. So if you're, if you're tied to your standards, you're going to find very quickly, and we do have resources um, that we can kind of show you um, as we go on, perhaps in another session, but um, that show that link of the big six, the information problem solving process with content area standards as well. And Cole, when you're thinking, you know, uh, you know, uh, when you're sort of putting big six thinking to these different situations, um, you know, we're also encouraging students not just to solve problems in math or solve problems in science or English language arts. We're, you know, getting students to be thinking like mathematicians, thinking like yes. historians, you know, um, thinking like artists. So um, it is that thinking, I think, that really will make the difference you know, between struggle and success. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Absolutely. So, so, so I what do to, we want to do next? <laughs> well, I'm glad you asked. Um, <laughs> so right. let's face it, the instructional challenge is how to encourage students uh, to see situations that they face as information problems and how to, how to apply successful strategies. And I think that um, is a good lead in to what we wanted to do next. Um, and that's a quick tour of the new big6.org website. I'm just not sure if we can screen share because I haven't used this platform to screen share. Right, so what I'm going to do is I'm gonna put the link to the new big6.org um, website in the comments, or if Christy or Mike wanna do that too. But what we'd like to do is invite you to take a look at the new website and give us some feedback. So what you'll see are resources. You'll see opportunities to engage with the community. We're trying to do some more on social media, obviously, and, 
and we're um, grateful for any advice that, that you would like to give us about how we can better utilize that to connect you with resources. But ultimately, that web page is um, the place for you to go to find out more about the Big Six, to get in contact with us but also to share your ideas um, as you um, potentially take your first steps. Or I know some of you who have been watching are some um, experts and have been doing the big six for a very long time in your professional practice. So we want to build a community. That's another part of, of this website that um, we want to kind of expand and grow. Um, our good friend Mike Geisenberg is online with us and what we'd like to do is to really honor and to carry forward what he and and his friend Bob um, created for us uh, you know, when when they were um, teacher librarians in in schools and that. So our our desire is to support that vision and that effort because we know how powerful for from the learning perspective the Big Six can be uh, for our students. So I think, like I said, I'll put the link in the comments and you can um, also just from the Big Six Facebook page where you're watching us today, um, the link to that web page is there as well. So by all means, let us know what you think. Really, this was an opportunity for us to just uh, introduce, um, you know, our efforts uh, in sharing the Big Six. Um, and the resources available on the web page. Um, but we also want to, um, you know, we want to get some ideas for what to address next. Uh, so please let us know in the comments section. And uh, I think we have a couple of minutes for uh, a Q&A if you have any questions now that uh, one of us or maybe um, Mike would be able to field. So if you have any questions, you can put them in the comment box. Um, or maybe just let us know where you are watching from. That'd be cool. And we'll be monitoring um, any interaction or comments that come in between now, and we'll set up another date in February to follow up. So um, what we're going to do then is uh, take a look at some of the comments that we might get from rebroadcasts um, or from, you know, your, uh, your emails. And we'll go ahead and design a, um, another event, you know, as Kale mentioned, and, um, you know, dive deep into the big six. So Kale, unless there's anything else you wanted to share, no, I think that's it. I, it looks like my video has gone a little bit wonky, yeah, too. But we have folks from Montana and New Jersey with us, um, Washington. It's so exciting that um, you've all joined us. And we hope that you'll share the recording, uh, links to the recording with your friends. We'll be uh, putting the link out through our Twitter um, feed as well. And that's also linked on the community page on the big6.org website. So with that, I think we'll uh, sign off for now. And just thank you so much for your time this afternoon. Take care. See so you long. February. So long, Big Six community. We'll see you next time.